Hey, what is up? So following the confirmation in the Better Call Saul Season 6 trailer of the Breaking Bad character Spooge being reintroduced into the plot of Better Call Saul next season, for this video, I wanted to now use this as an opportunity to take a look at other throwaway dialogue by Saul Goodman in the plot of Breaking Bad to see what other clients and character cameos could theoretically also play a role in the plot of the final season of Better Call Saul based on all of the aforementioned dialogue. So yeah, just to start with the appearance of Spooge here next season, in season 2 of Breaking Bad in the episode entitled Better Call Saul, we learn from Saul Goodman that Spooge used to be a client of his. These are, are vicious, desperate people. I, I... I've been told that, that one of them killed another man by crushing his head with an ATM machine. <laughs> People love to take credit for the fun ones. The guy who got his head smushed used to be a client of mine. His wife killed him, right? It was open and shut. Of course, this dialogue from Saul Goodman here is a callback to the episode entitled Peekaboo, where following Spooge and his lady ripping off Skinny Pete in the previous episode entitled Breakage, Walt then sends Jesse to Spooge's house in order to quote-unquote handle it. I want you to handle it which then inadvertently results in Spooge's lady crushing his head with an ATM machine, following her being upset with him repeatedly calling her a skank. And so yeah, with that backstory in mind, it should be noted that due to the extreme vagueness and open-endedness of Saul Goodman here in this scene, this makes any plot involving Saul representing Spooge next season rather open-ended for the creators to really craft pretty much any story of their desire involving these two characters. So I'm really excited to see what the creators have in store for us next season. And so, on top of Spooge being a direct reference by Saul from the plot of Breaking Bad, we also hear in the same episode entitled Better Call Saul that Saul also appeared to have represented Emilio Koyama based on Jesse Pinkman's dialogue here in the scene following Badger's arrest and Walt and Jesse showing up at the law offices of Saul Goodman and Associates to pay for his legal services. Okay, this dude got Emilio off like twice. Okay, both times they had him dead to rights, yo, and then poof, dudes like Houdini. Seriously, when the going gets tough, you don't want a criminal lawyer, right? You want a criminal lawyer. Know what I'm saying? And while I have discussed the storyline involving Emilio more in depth in a previous video, which I will link in the description, like Spooge, due to the rather open ended nature of this dialogue here, there are very few restrictions that must be adhered to by the creators in order to avoid any major plot holes as part of this potential storyline, giving the creators, again, pretty much free reign here in crafting any story of their choosing next season. So yeah, on top of these two characters likely making an appearance in the plot of Better Call Saul next season, Another character, which also could appear, that we know Saul had a connection to based on the dialogue of Breaking Bad, is James Edward Kilkelly, which was displayed to us in the same aforementioned episode of Breaking Bad as Spooge and Emilio. 1963, James Edward Kilkelly is convicted of stealing a vending machine, better known as Jimmy in and out City, state, and federal, he's spent 44 of the last 58 years inside. Jimmy provides a very special service. For a price, Jimmy will go to prison for you. On purpose? Sometime during the Clinton administration, Jimmy figured out how he could use his talents to turn a profit. So yeah, as we can interpret by Saul Goodman's dialogue, to me, it appears that Saul had established this connection to James Edward Kilkelly many years prior to him using his services of going to jail for Walt and Jesse in order to spare Badger a lengthy prison term. And this connection, therefore, likely occurred at some point in time in the timeline of Better Call Saul prior to the timeline of Breaking Bad. However, it should be noted that the actor who plays James Edward Kilkelly, Jimmy Daniels, actually passed away in 2018. And due to the fact that there's so much story still left to tell, 
I imagine that the creators will have to be very calculated with how they use their limited amount of on-screen time to craft the plot of Better Call Saul next season. So in my opinion, with the actor who plays James Edward Kilkelly having passed away, it would seem rather difficult and maybe somewhat too time-consuming on screen to see this character added into the plot of Better Call Saul next season when you don't have the actor to play this character. But I suppose it is still theoretically possible. And so yeah, now moving on from these three specific characters that Saul Goodman mentioned in the plot of Breaking Bad, we also have some additional, much more open-ended characters that Saul mentioned in the series Breaking Bad as well, but only by description and not by name. For example, in Season 2 of Better Call Saul, in the episode entitled Phoenix, we hear Saul mention to Walter White the contact he has in respect to money laundering. Got a guy who knows this guy, who knows this rain man type, right? He lives with his mother in her, in her basement in Belarus, right? So good luck extraditing his fat Russian ass. Whoa, whoa. He's a hacker cracker, extraordinaire. This guy can hijack random desktops all around the world turn him into zombies that do his bidding. And what is so interesting about this contact, in my opinion, is that due to the fact that we never see this character displayed to us on screen in the plot of Breaking Bad, this would make it much easier for the creators to cast an actor to play this character should they use this character in the plot of Better Call Saul somehow next season in order to concretely establish how Saul met this contact. On top of this, we also hear Saul mention in Season 3 of Breaking Bad, in the episode entitled Abacue, he knew some casino managers who would jump at the chance to report false losses as part of the plot of Walt and Skyler explaining away Walt's newfound wealth to buy the car wash to Hank and Marie as gambling winnings. Well, there you have it. Uh, I'll generate false currency transaction reports out the wazoo, as well as the necessary W2Gs couple casino managers who will jump at the chance to report false losses. And again, as with the plot involving Saul's money laundering contact, the creators could also theoretically cast any actor they choose to play this character, should this character be introduced in the plot of Better Call Saul next season in order to establish how Saul met this contact. On top of this, in the same episode as the casino manager, we also hear Saul mention his contact Danny, who owns the laser tag, who based on this dialogue seems to have a rather established relationship with Saul Goodman. Danny runs the laser tag. Danny is the guy who had a vision. Where others saw a dirt lot, he saw black lights, rubber aliens, teenagers running around with ray guns, right? It was like Bugsy Siegel in the desert. And when the stock market took a shit and Danny got into trouble, he went searching for exactly the type of situation that we're offering. Okay, Danny will look the other way to keep his dream afloat. In other words, Danny can be trusted completely. And with this being taken into account, as I have discussed in depth in a previous video, which I will link in the description, this Danny that Saul mentioned here in this scene could theoretically be none other than Daniel Wormald, a.k.a. Price. So if the creators could use this dialogue to once again display what is probably my favorite minor supporting character into the storyline of Saul Goodman in season 6 somehow, I would absolutely be all for this. As in my opinion, I feel this storyline would have some incredible potential to be an amazing, much more light-hearted subplot involving Price amidst all the dark and intense moments that will be displayed to us next season. In addition to Price, as I also discussed in depth in a previous video, which I will also link in the description, we also hear Saul mention his contact of Ed the Disappearer in Season 4 of Breaking Bad in the episode entitled Bullet Points. This is a last resort back pocket kind of thing, but if you really got to protect yourself, uh, disappear. Poof. Poof. There's a guy who can make it happen. They'd call him a... Uh, Disappearer. It of course should be noted that the actor who plays Ed the Disappearer, Robert Forrester, passed away in 2019, which I discussed more in depth in said video of how this could affect a storyline surrounding his character. So yeah, like I said, if you want a full, more in-depth breakdown of that potential storyline, make sure you click on the video link in the description. 
On top of this, another contact that Saul claimed to have was also revealed to us in Season 4 of Breaking Bad in the episode entitled Problem Dog as part of the plot where Walt asked Saul for a hitman that could be used to take out Gus Fring. You could help me find a third party. What third party? Someone who can ameliorate the situation. Let's ditch the thesaurus, all right? Uh, you talking about a hitman? Assuming that's still what they're called. <laughs> Wrong answer! That's what the kids call epic fail. And again, while this plot detail is rather open-ended, based on this dialogue, nonetheless, in my opinion, it would be really interesting to see how Saul may have came to acquire these connections from Mike Ehrmantraut in the plot of the sixth and final season of Better Call Saul. Could be a finder's fee. A big one. Look, if you held my feet to the fire, I, I could come up with a couple names. One or two guys west of the Rockies who do this kind of work. But guess what? These guys, they know Mike, and Mike knows them. What are you telling me? Mike knows everyone who does this? Who do you think gave me their names? Should this detail somehow be introduced in the Saul Goodman storyline next season? And finally, as I also discussed in depth in a previous video, which I will link in the description, Saul also mentioned in Season 5 of Breaking Bad in the episode entitled Hazard Pay that he provided Vomino's Pest with his legal services for half a decade as part of the plot where Walt Jesse and Mike would use this company as a front to manufacture and distribute methamphetamine. Tell me about these guys. Uh, Mr. Ponytail on the sidewalk, that's Ira. He's the owner. The roof is Sandor. The ladder's Fernando. And down below, that's Todd. And you know them how? Well, I've been uh, pulling their chestnuts out of the fire, legally speaking, for five years. So it is definitely a very strong possibility as a result of this that we could see the character Ira reprise his role in the plot of Better Call Saul in the sixth and final season as we've already seen his character be introduced to us in season four. And again if you want a more in-depth full breakdown of the storyline surrounding Saul and Vomino's Pest make sure you click the link in the description. So yeah, if I'm not mistaken, that pretty much sums up all of the contacts that Saul claimed to have had based on the dialogue and backstory of Breaking Bad. And while we know that we will definitely see Spooge next season, I also think that some of these characters and clients that I mentioned have a much better chance of appearing next season just based on the logistics of the actors portraying these characters and also based on how these characters and clients would more naturally fit into the storyline of Saul Goodman heading into next season as it pertains to all other aspects of Saul's storyline that need to occur based on the backstory of Breaking Bad. So yeah, with all that being said, I can't wait to see which characters the creators decide to display to us next season and which aspects of Saul Goodman's throwaway dialogue they leave open-ended for the audience to maybe use artistic license to surmise how Saul might have established these connections with these contexts in the plot of Breaking Bad. Alright, that is all I really got for you guys on this one. Definitely let me know what you guys think about which one of these characters and clients have the best chance of making a cameo appearance in the plot of Better Call Saul next season in the comments section. As always, my name is Anton Jackson. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I can't wait to make many more videos prior to the premiere of Season 6 in April.